to today's lecture on data hazards. We have started our discussion on various types of hazards that arise in pipeline implementation of processors. And you may recall that uh, the data hazards is one of the three types of hazards uh, and in the last lecture we have discussed about the structural hazard and we have seen how structural hazards can be overcome with the help of additional hardware. Now coming to the data hazards, as we have seen the dat data hazards can be classified into three types. First one is read after write in uh, where J tries to write a letter instruction J tries to read a value before I writes into it and the other two are write after write WAW type and WAR write after read type. However, as you have seen uh, uh, for the pipeline that we have been discussing, the simple five stage risk pipeline, uh, they are only read after write type of hazards may result in a pipeline stall. On the other hand, uh, write after read and write after write hazards cannot occur because of different reasons that we have discussed in the last lecture. Now, uh, before I mention about this, let us consider what is the outcome of this data hazard. Here is a code sequence add R1, comma R2, comma R3 followed by sub R4, comma R1, comma R3, then and R6, comma R1, comma R7 and so on. So, we find here you have got five instructions and data hazard is arising because uh, the instructs the second instruction is trying to read a data which has not yet been written into the register and uh, this is leading to a hazard. Similarly, the third instruction is also uh, facing hazard because it is trying to read data uh, before the writing has taken place into the register. However, the subsequent instructions will not face any hazard because uh, uh, they are reading the data from the register after writing has taken place. Now, uh, this is the, the how can we overcome these hazards? There are several techniques by, we, by which these data hazards can be overcome. The first technique is known as forwarding and bypassing. Forwarding and bypassing technique is based on hardware uh, approach. That means, you have to add some additional hardware to overcome data hazards uh, and we shall see how it can be implemented. The other techniques are essentially software based. First one is basic compiler pipeline scheduling and we shall see how compiler can help in scheduling instructions such that the data hazard is eliminated or its impact is reduced. Then uh, this the, the scheduling that is being done by compi uh, compiler is known as static scheduling. On the other hand, uh, the scheduling can be done with the help of hardware which is known as dynamic scheduling which I shall also discuss and this dynamic scheduling can be done without renaming and with renaming. And finally, we shall discuss how hardware speculation can also help in reducing data hazards. So, first let us focus on uh, forwarding and bypassing, which is a hardware based approach. If we uh, look at this particular uh, uh, pipeline uh, execution of these instructions, we find that data hazard is arising in spite of the fact that results are already available in the pipeline registers, although it has not yet been data has not yet been written into the register that register where it has to be written that is R 1, but those values which was computed uh, here uh, in, in the third clock cycle uh, are already available in different uh, pipeline registers. So, as you can see uh, the, the different the, uh, pipeline registers which are holding different values after the execution uh, in different stages. For example, in after instruction fetch, the instruction is stored, stored in this instruction register. 
after the uh, instruction decode phase, uh, the data which is being read from the registers are again stored in this in the five line registers. So, various values which are generated in a particular stage are stored in those registers in these five line registers. Similarly, after execution the results are available in these uh, five line registers. So, uh, similarly, after uh, <coughs> whenever memory access is being done the result is again stored in the five line registers and finally, uh, when write back is taking place data is taken from the five line register and which is being written to the proper register. So, we find that uh, the key idea of forwarding comes from the fact that data which is already available in five line registers, we are not utilizing it. We are trying to read it from the uh, final <coughs> register where it is stored at the, at the end of fifth cycle. So, uh, can we not read the operands from five line <coughs> registers instead of the uh, I mean before it is written into the uh, register of the ALU that is your in, in our case the register R 1. So, how this can be done is shown here. We shall require several multiplexers as you can see ALU uh, inputs are coming from uh, two multiplexer earlier they were coming I, uh, only from uh, the the this 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 particular stage that means the 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 pipeline stage uh, that means the first pipeline uh, pipeline register so inputs were taken from there or from the immediate data that was taken now from different pipeline registers the outputs are uh, applied here to the input of the marks and for you can see uh, from this the uh, the uh, the alu output is uh, is applied to the marks. Similarly, this ALE output is also applied to the <coughs> other marks uh, and similarly from the uh, <coughs> data which is being read from the memory th those they are also written into the that they are applied to the input of the marks, uh, because uh, we, we shall read from the pipeline register instead of reading from the register. Similarly, uh, finally, whenever it comes of course, it will go to the register. So, the basic idea is that with the help of uh, multiplexers having more than two inputs say five inputs to each of these multiplexers, the inputs can be taken not only from the final register, but also from different pipeline stages because the, inter the intermediate results which are hold in the pipeline registers are available in them and they can be taken from there and applied to the ALU and that is how uh, this, uh, this, uh, this hazard is overcome. So, to support data forwarding additional hardware is required. First uh, hardware is multiplexers to allow data to be transferred back and second is the control logic. We know that the control logic is performing the control of different data path uh, hardware that is present in the processor. That means, it is controlling the different registers, it is controlling the ALU. Uh, the operation to be performed and so on. So, here so whenever we add uh, multiplexers with multiple inputs for example, this multiplexer is having five inputs. So, we will require three control signals uh, which will uh, select one of the five inputs and that will be applied to the ALU. Similarly, uh, here also you have got another multiplexers five inputs are coming from five different sources and you have to select one of the five and uh, depending on the instruction that is being executed. That means, the depending on the off code, the controller will decide which inputs will be selected uh, and that the data will go to the ALU. So, the controller uh, control logic of the multiplexer uh, will also be uh, uh, has to be implemented. In other words, uh, I am trying to tell that the controller without pipelining will be simpler than controller with uh, sorry controller with forwarding. That means, if forwarding is not done then 
the controller will be simpler, but whenever forwarding is implemented, then the controller will be complex because it has to generate additional control signals. And not uh, the, those control signals can be gener generated by analyzing different values, different I mean instructions. That means, you have to see in what situations the operands will come from different uh, those uh, pipeline registers and accordingly by that accordingly the logic has to be implemented in controller. So, uh, uh, this, this implementation uh, will be little more complex. So, this is how forwarding is done. This is also called bypassing because we are uh, bypassing reading from the final register uh, by reading it from uh, different uh, pipeline registers which are present uh, which where the intermediate values are temporarily stored. <coughs> okay, this is forwarding. Now, uh, whenever we do forwarding, this particular diagram shows how the uh, how uh, forwarding is helping in overcoming uh, hazards, data data hazards, and as you can see earlier uh, we were trying to read this value from this register. Instead of reading from this register now, uh, for the second instruction that, uh, that value will be coming from this uh, particular pipeline register instead of the uh, register bank that is present in the ALU. So, uh, it is reading from there. So, uh, since it is in the forward direction, there is no hazard. Similarly, we can see here also uh, in the, the third instruction is also getting the upper end from the uh, pipeline register. Uh, that means, this R 1 is also read from the uh, pipeline register and that is being applied to the one arm of the ALU. And uh, similarly, of course, the, the third instruction uh, that, that upper end is being read from the, uh, the register itself and of course, uh, this is possible because we are using what is known as split phase, split phase axis. So, you have a resistor and that resistor what is being done? Uh, it is controlled by a clock, there is a clock which is applied and the clock is being applied to control the operation of the resistor. Now, what is being done writing into the write operation is being performed in this uh, the first cycle first part of the cycle. So, and then a read operation is done in the second phase as a consequence after the writing is writing takes place in the same phase same uh, phase same clock during the same clock you can read it. So, that is what is happening in this particular case that means writing of the data is taking place into the register in the first part of the clock cycle and in the second part of the clock cycle which is shown by uh, green, uh, green said uh, the reading operation is taking place from the same register. So, from the same register in two phases you are able to do two operations writing as well as reading that is why it is called split phase access and by if the split phase access is not allowed that means, if the read uh, only reading or writing can be taken place in a single clock cycle in such a case of course, again there will be a data hazard in this case and in such a case you have to read it uh, not from the register, but again you have to read it from the pipeline register. <coughs> okay. So, uh, now the question arises this type of dat data hazard. Uh, can be overcome by forwarding or bypassing. Can all possible data hazards be overcome by bypassing or forwarding? The answer is no. There are situations where I will see even by using that complicated bypassing hardware, the hazard cannot be overcome. So, in this particular case, uh, it involves a load operation. So, you will be loading some value into a resistor R 1 and <coughs> So, you will require a memory access. So, as we have seen uh, the in the fourth clock cycles the memory access is being done. So, that means, the, uh, the value that is being read from the memory will be available only at the end of clock cycle 4. On the other hand uh, the next instruction 
that sub uh, r 4 comma r 1 comma r 6 is reading the value in the third in the fourth clock I mean in the uh, in the beginning of the fourth clock cycle. So, in the beginning of the fourth clock cycle it is trying to read the value and at the end of the fourth clock cycle data is available. So, in this this particular in this particular situation uh, there will be hazards and so this hazard cannot be overcome by bypassing. So, uh, you have to introduce a stall uh, to overcome this situation. However, the subsequent uh, re subsequent reading of operands uh, will take place from the register. So, uh, this will lead to a stall which, which we call unavoidable stall. So, this type of stalls will be present whenever you are reading an operand from a memory <coughs> and that is being used in the next cycle. However, whenever it involves uh, ALU operations, then uh, this problem will not arise. Okay. So, this is all about the data hazards. Now, we shall uh, discuss about the use of compiler for overcoming data hazards and uh, basic idea is find sequences of unrelated instructions that can be overlapped in the pipeline to exploit ILP. That means, <coughs> Uh, in our ID, in our in case of our ideal uh, um, implementation of pipeline, we assume that all the instructions are independent originally, but subsequently we discovered that there is data dependency, and because of data dependence, there is some kind of uh, uh, I mean the instructions are in, in not really independent. So you have to maintain a sequence, and uh, you cannot arbitrarily change their position. However, there are instructions which are independent and which can be identified by the compiler and then they can be scheduled uh, that means, the original sequence can be modified by the compiler and change their sequence in such a way that the data hazard will be overcome. That is the basic idea. And <coughs> So, a dependent instruction must be separated from the source instruction by a distance in clock cycles equal to the latency of the source instruction to avoid stalls. So, this is the key idea behind this compiler based scheduling of instructions. That means, uh, a, an instruction which is dependent on the instru previous instruction has to be separated from the, uh, from the source instruction. Uh, how much separation has to be done to avoid data hazard, which is the latency of the uh, pipeline that is being implemented, that is dependent on the pipe, depending on the pipeline that we have implemented. So, this is how we can avoid stall. Let me illustrate this with the help of a simple example. So, uh, a clever compiler can often reschedule instructions to avoid a stall. So, here we have got a uh, an instruction load, uh, I have already mentioned about this whenever it involves reading uh, data from a memory that means, the, the sequence of instruction is load word r 2 comma o r 4, then you are performing addition operation using in, uh, involving the uh, same register r 2 uh, and r 3. So, you are adding the content of R2 with the content of R3 and storing the result in R1 and then another instruction is there load word R5 uh, <coughs> R4. So, uh, here we can see that uh, this particular uh, reading of data will take place at the end of fourth clock cycle. End of fourth clock cycle. On the other hand here the reading will take place at the end at the beginning of of the fourth clock cycle. So, what we find that here uh, there is a latency of only one clock cycle. If this instruction can be separated from this by one instruction, our job will be done. That means, the data hazard will be overcome. So, uh, this particular instruction is independent 
uh, if we consider the three instructions, we find that this instruction has no dependency on the previous two instructions. So, these two instructions can be interchanged. So, these if these two instructions are interchanged, that means if we write in this manner load word R2 uh, 0 R4, then add sorry, then then second in the load instruction load R5 4 R4 and the if the reordering is done in this way R1 R2 R3. So, we find that uh, in this particular case by the time this instruction will read the data from the register R2, writing has been already completed because at the end of fourth clock cycle rather in the in the, uh, in the first phase of the uh, first half uh, first half of the uh, fifth clock cycle, writing will take place into the register by this instruction and reading here is taking place in the fifth clock cycle uh, in the second second phase. So, here the reading will take place, here the writing will take place and as a consequence uh, the hazard will not arise and uh, you will be able to read uh, from the register. So, this is how the hazard is being overcome uh, in this particular case. So, by, uh, by reordering the instructions, this is a transformed code, there is no stall needed. So, earlier there was a stall needed here at the, uh, I mean after load word, you have to introduce a stall if you have to read correct data and this is not required in the transform code. So, this type of uh, compiler scheduling can be done uh, <coughs> with the help of uh, with the help of a optimizing compiler, we call it optimizing compiler. Now, uh, this type of uh, situations of identifying independent instructions is very difficult in a small uh, in a small straight line code. Usually, the number of instructions present in a straight line code is very few and since the number is very few, finding independent instru instructions among them is uh, difficult. So, how can we improve uh, the instruction level parallelism? One very important technique which has been exploited uh, that is known as <coughs> that is known as uh, unrolling, loop unrolling and that involved that is actually related to loops. So, let us consider an example, uh, you have got this original code i is equal to for i is equal to 1000, uh, i get a uh, semicolon, i get up then 1. I, I is equal to i minus 1. So, it is reading data from an array and then performing the operation x i is equal to x i plus s. So, s is a uh, constant scalar value which is available in a particular register. So, this is the high level language code, the corresponding mixed code is given here. Uh, so, uh, first of all you are loading the value, you are loading it uh, into the register in a register F0, F0 is the first array element you are loading, then you are performing the addition operation assuming that the second element that the constant scalar value is present in register F2. So, this is a and then uh, the content of F0 and content of F2 are added and that is being stored in F4 and then you are storing the data uh, in the register F4 uh, using register R 1 as the pointer and result is being stored. And the, the next two instructions are essentially loop manipulation instructions uh, which are used for housekeeping uh, uh, the, uh, the loop. So, the, uh, the R 1 is decremented by, uh, so these are double words, so you require 8 bytes uh, 64 bits. So, 8 bytes are required. So, R 1 is decremented by 8 and then it goes back, uh, it also checks whether that you know that 1000 is being stored in R 2 that is why it compares and if branch not equal that means, if they are not equal then it goes back to the first one. So, in this way it keeps on doing the looping. 
thousand times looping will take place. So, these are the first, these are the three instructions as you can uh, we have already seen there is data dependency and because of that dependency among these instructions uh, in the if the instructions are present in this order you have to introduce stalls. So, executing the loop on MIPS pipeline without uh, scheduling will require uh, how many stalls as you can see after load you will require one stall. Uh, this is based on this table. So, this is the source instruction and this is the user instruction or dependent instruction you can say and if it is a floating point ALU operation and next instruction is also a, a floating point ALU operation and then uh, if, if the dependent instruction is uh, uh, I mean if there, there is a latency of 3 that means this from the source instruction to dependent instruction you have to separate them by three instruction you have to if you want to avoid stall and the second one is floating point AD operation and the next one is stored double in such a case it will involve uh, uh, this the latency is 2 uh, that means you have to introduce two stalls uh, to overcome data hazard in such a situation. The third one is load double followed by floating point AD operation in such a case latency is 1. So, one stall has to be introduced. So, in the first case that first stall is, uh, is coming out of this that is means it, you have got a load double and it is followed by an ALU operation floating point ALU operation. So, the latency is 1. So, you have to introduce one stall. Then coming to the uh, second uh, the second instruction add double uh, f 4 comma f 0 comma f 2 here you have to you are using the um, you have to re, uh, read the value from the register in this third instruction and this, this belongs to the uh, first type of uh, problem that is a, a floating point ALU operation followed by floating point ALU operation. So, dependent instruction uh, is, has to be separated by uh, you know there is a uh, sorry stored double. So, this is stored double sorry this is this belongs to the second category floating point ALU operation followed by stored double. So, you will require two stalls because latency here is 2 uh, if we want to avoid stall. Then here again you are decrementing a resistor. So, it is an ALU operation and here this is a branch operation. So, in this case also you will it will involve one uh, stall because uh, you are performing not equal you are performing ALU operation. And so, loads double I mean you will it will you will require one stall here it will belong to uh, this type of problem and uh, one stall has to be introduced here uh, because you will not get the uh, proper value in R 1 and uh, I mean unless one, st one uh, stall is introduced you will not get correct value it will not jump to the proper value. So, we find that 8 stalls uh, I mean uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 stalls are required and total total number of uh, clock cycles that is required to execute uh, each pass of the loop is 9 clock cycles. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 and 9, 9 clock cycles. Now, let us see how uh, by rescheduling the instructions uh, the number of hazards can be reduced what has been done here the that loop manipulation housekeeping instruction has been shifted uh, moved earlier uh, earlier it was present here somewhere here from uh, at the after stored data it was present here now it has been shifted earlier and uh, since these two instructions are not dependent not dependent. So, uh, there is no need for introducing stall here and these two say load and add data has been separated by one instruction and as a consequence no stall is required since they have been the, the, there was a latency of one clock cycle. So, um, there, there will be no need for introducing stall here. But however, these two stalls will be present because add data it is followed by stored data as per this you will require two stalls to be introduced. Uh, however, whenever 
this type of uh, rescheduling is done, you have to change the instruction. You may, you may, see, you may see that uh, in the previous case, this was uh, you, are, you, are, you are decrementing by 8, the value of R 1 was decremented by 8 to uh, point to the next element of the array. So, uh, but in the in this residual code, we are uh, we are performing decrement earlier than uh, storing the value. So that's why to store the result in the same memory location, instead of decrementing, we are adding it because already decrement operation was done. So uh, addition of eight is being performed. So this instruction is modified so that the array element uh, the, that means result is stored in proper locations from the uh, proper memory locations. So, it was present that means this will point to the same memory uh, as it was done by this, this instruction. That means although the instruction has changed, but uh, the value that will be that effective address that will be generated by this, this instruction and this instruction will be same. So, as a result it will store the value in the same memory location because the effective address is same. So, uh, in this situation we find that two stalls are still present. Is there any way by which these two stalls can be overcome? So, to avoid a pipeline stall a dependent instruction must be separated from the source instruction by a distance equal to the pipeline latency of the source instruction. So, in this situation whenever you have got very few uh, instructions in your uh, in your uh, straight line code, you cannot really overcome these stalls. However, this can be overcome if you do loop unrolling. So, the loop will be unrolled by several times, maybe twice or thrice or four times, and then you have enough number of instructions in your straight line code, they, they can be rescheduled and over, uh, you will be able to overcome the stalls. Let us see how the uh, loop unrolling is being done. So, uh, here the loop unrolling has been done and you have got four copies. So, this so the, the same three instructions <coughs> load, add double, load double, add double and store double. These three instructions which are the uh, which are repeated four times you can see this is one copy, this is second copy, this is third copy, this is fourth copy. And after unrolling is being done, obviously these, these two instructions are to be appropriately modified. That means, this, this is a unrolled code uh, where four, four, uh, four uh, I mean unrolling has been done four times. So, in this case uh, how many times the uh, this loop has to execute. Earlier the loop was executing 1000 times, but now since each loop is performing 4 operations of a single loop earlier loop, you have to loop only 250 times, because the number of uh, I mean operations that is being performed is 4 in this case in a single loop. So, by this unrolling number of uh, uh, loops uh, iterations will be reduced. However, the size of the code is increasing, the source side of the code is increasing. Now, if it is present in this form, uh, obviously those stalls will be present, one stall at the end of uh, after load, uh, load double and uh, or two stalls after add double and again uh, for, for the next uh, code again one and two stalls. In this way we find total of three plus three plus three plus three plus three that means uh, four, four, 12 plus one, 13 stalls will be required and uh, only a gain of nine cycles. I mean without doing unrolling earlier what was happening? So, uh, two cycles were saved, but in this particular case how you are saving? we are saving because this these two instructions is repeated only once instead of four times. Because you know unro un uh, since the unrolling has been done the number the number of iterations will be reduced from 
uh, 1000 to 256 and as a consequence the number of uh, instructions that will be executed will be reduced. These two instructions uh, number of such instructions will be reduced and uh, leading to a gain of 3 cycles because here you know uh, it, it is executed only once instead of 4 times. So, 1 stall plus this one. So, 3 cycles were required I mean for each uh, loop earlier. Now, you will require only one and of course, the number of loops is reducing that is why a gain of 9 cycles uh, just for this computation. So, 4 computations are being performed and <coughs> you are saving 9 cycles. Now, you see the size of the uh, straight line code is quite big. So, we have a uh, long straight line code earlier you were having only uh, 4 or 5 instructions we, we have seen here very few instructions were present and now you have got large number of instructions. So, the compiler has much more opportunity uh, for rescheduling the instructions. So, scope for instruction level parallelism is increasing here. So, you can exploit instruction level parallelism more whenever this unrolling is being done and you can see the, uh, how it is being done. In this particular case, this is the uh, loop unrolling with scheduling. You can see all the load operations are being performed because they are independent so, and all the load after performing all the load operations and obviously, uh, the instructions will change because you have to read the array element properly. That is why the first the, uh, the uh, this and you can see after the first loading is done here it is minus 8 that means, next element is uh, uh, R 1 minus 8 and next one is minus 16 and third one is minus 24 because each element requires 8 bytes and that is why this adjustment of the address is required to generate effective address for proper elements of the I mean so that it points to the uh, proper uh, array elements. So, after loading is done, you will be able to perform the add, op add operations. Now, you see this load and uh, you know that uh, here you are writing in F 0 and this F 0 is here, which is, uh, it, which is separated by 3 instructions. So, latency is 1 and it is separated by uh, 3 instructions. So, there is no question of any hazard. Uh, uh, whenever you execute this instruction at double f 4 comma f 0 comma f 2. Similarly, this instruction this load and this instruction where f 6 is being read is separated by again by 1, 2, 3 instructions. So, uh, latency is 1 and separation is by 3 instructions uh, that uh, that hazard is being overcome. So, in this way there is no hazard present here. Similarly, whenever you store the data the 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 uh, the uh, the, uh, the stored data he here you are performing and that uh, f4 was loading was done here and it is separated by several instructions one two three three instructions and second load is al also being performed now after this uh, uh, this load second data loading is done here again one uh, the, this uh, this uh, subtraction operation which is loop manipulation uh, uh, operation has been shifted. The reason is in this this add double is by being performed here where you are writing into a register f 16 and that value uh, sorry f 12 and that value is being read here. So, this separation is being again increased so that uh, there is uh, there is no hazard. So, in this way by scheduling the instructions in this manner uh, you are able to overcome all the hazards. So, no hazard present here. So, gain of 22 cycles you are able to achieve a gain of 22 cycles whenever you perform uh, this type of unrolling and scheduling of instructions. So, loop unrolling with scheduling we find we have been able to overcome all the hazards that was present in the execution. Now, the question arises uh, what kind of problem, what is the problem we may face 
whenever we do this kind of uh, loop unrolling and scheduling. Uh, it is definitely overcoming all the hazards, but will it introduce any new problem which may degrade the performance? By overcoming hazards, stalls are removed, obviously it will improve the performance. We have seen here you are gaining 22 cycles, but is there any possibility of any uh, reduction in performance because of this loop unrolling and scheduling? <coughs> we can see here, uh, okay, uh, before I come to the disadvantages, what kind of decisions and transform transformations are taken for loop unrolling and scheduling is explained here. What are the things you have to do? rather not you have to do, rather the compiler has to do is being explained. First of all, identify the loop iterations uh, independent. It may so happen that different iterations may not be independent, which is being performed in iteration i and in iteration i plus 1, they may not be independent. So, loop unrolling is profitable only when the loop iterations are independent. In, in our example, we have seen the operations that is being performed in two different iterations are completely independent, because uh, operations were being performed on different elements of the array. Since they are performed on different elements of the array, array they are independent, but it may not say happen uh, for all kinds of loops. So, the first thing that you have to see is identify the loop iterations are independent. Second is use different resistors to avoid unnecessary constants. We have seen uh, in our in our original program, we had uh, we had uh, we have used very few resistors R 1, R 4 and R 2. Only these three resistors were being used in our original program, but whenever we did loop unrolling, we have seen we have used a large number of resistors. We have used not only uh, uh, those floating point resistors R1, R2 and R4. We have also used uh, a number of other resistors uh, F4, F6, you know F6 were not used earlier, F8 were not used earlier, F10 were not used earlier, F12 were not used earlier. F14 were not used earlier, F16 were not used earlier. These all these resistors were not used earlier. That means, whenever we perform loop unrolling, it is essential to use to have large number of resistors to avoid name dependencies, because you know uh, if you use the same resistors, again this will lead to uh, some kind of dependency. And, the, and this dependency, although not real dependency, but uh, it will lead to hazard in uh, some kind of pipelines. So, that is the reason why we have we have made use, we, we have used a large number of resistors and that resistor, uh, use of different resistor to avoid unnecessary constants, that is important whenever you do loop unrolling. Eliminate the extra test and branch instruction and adjust the loop termination and iteration code. We have seen we have to uh, we have uh, removed a large number of this these two instructions. This one, uh, this this instruction and branch not equal, and we have modified them accordingly uh, such that it point it go, goes to the next uh, iteration. <coughs> determine the loads and stores that can be interchanged in the unrolled loop. So, we have this was our ori, uh, original uh, uh, code that was present immediately after unrolling. Now, this has been done by, un, uh, by uh, scheduling after unrolling and we had to identify independent instructions which can be placed one after the other. So, determine the load and stores that can be interchanged in the unrolled loop, schedule the code preserving any data dependencies needed to yield the same result as the original code. So, this is the, uh, this is the, uh, this is very important ultimately you have to your result should be same. So, maintaining the same result 
you are able to avoid dependencies by scheduling the instructions. So, basic idea is key requirement is to understand how instructions depend on one another and how they can be changed and reordered. So, this is dependent on the processor architecture. So, what uh, I am uh, what we are trying to tell that compiler must understand the processor architecture because in the processor uh, how many registers are available. Fortunately, uh, for risk processor large number of registers are available. For example, uh, we have got 32 registers. So, uh, availability of large number of registers is available. Secondly, uh, that dependency uh, that latency between instructions that is also dependent on the pipeline implementation of the architect implementation and those latencies are to be understood by the compiler and accordingly uh, scheduling of instructions are to be done. And this is how a compiler can do the job. Now, this loop unrolling has got three different types of limits. Number one is decrease in the amount of overhead amortized with each unroll. So, the decrease in the amount of overhead as, as you are doing the unrolling with each unroll you are able to reduce the uh, I mean amount of overhead. And we have seen that for each unroll you are able to reduce two instructions. And as you do so that decrease in the amount of over, uh, decrease in the amount of overhead amortize with each roll on each unroll. So, this is happening. Second is the growth in the code size due to loop unrolling. So, uh, we have already seen that size of the code is increasing. That means, this has to be stored in the cache memory before the program can be executed. As you know, nowadays all processors are provided with cache memories. And those, uh, if the code size is small, a small number of uh, instructions are to be stored in the cache memory. But if the size of the code is big, then you know the, this will lead to what is known as cache misses. So, this will lead to cache misses. So, that means the growth in the code size due to loop unrolling may increase the cache miss rates. So, this will degrade the performance. Later on, I shall discuss about uh, these uh, cache miss, how cache miss occurs whenever you have got uh, cache memory. So, uh, program that is transferred to the cache memory. Uh, they are cache miss may occur if the size of the code is big. So, this problem will also limit on the <coughs> loop unrolling. Third is shortfall of registers created by aggressive unrolling and scheduling. We have seen we are using uh, registers, additional registers for each unrolled code to avoid various types of constraints. And whenever we are doing so, uh, uh, you know that a point will reach whenever we may not have uh, any further register available. So, this is known as register pressure. So, within the uh, you have to exploit the registers which are available and as the unrolling is done uh, there will there will be a shortfall of registers. So, this is known as register pressure. So, this will again limit on the put a limit on the loop unrolling. So, loop unrolling improves the performance by eliminating overhead instructions that we have already seen and loop unrolling is a simple, but useful method to increase the size of the straight line code fragments that we have already mentioned and sophisticated high level transformation, uh, transformation led to significant increase in complexity of the compilers. So, uh, these three statements are very important because how loop enrolling is improving performance. At the same time, it is also telling uh, in what way the complexity of the compiler is increasing. That means, the compiler writer uh, has to be knowledgeable about the processor architecture and then only the uh, unrolling can be done in an effective way uh, to overcome the stalls. <coughs> okay, the uh, let us stop here. We have discussed about the uh, uh, the static scheduling of instructions with the help of compiler. Uh, later on uh, in the next class, 
we shall uh, we shall discuss about another technique which is known as uh, software pipelining the hardware pipelining we have seen in detail where the uh, instructions are executed in a overlapped manner different instructions now we shall see software pipelining where you will see instructions from different loops different iterations will be executed in a overlap manner this is also a compiler based approach by which uh, the instruction level parallelism is, parallelism is improved and uh, there will be the uh, stalls are avoided so that i shall discuss in the next lecture thank you